Hey, NAMI students, welcome back to another note session. Um, this is the same chapter we were just on. We're just going to do a, a different part of it. So there's actually three tests over the skeletal system. This is test two. You probably noticed that from the notes up here. Uh, just going to start with some basic stuff today, and then we'll kind of uh, um, progress from there. But uh, first thing I want to talk about is, let's say, I'm, I'm not trying to be morbid, but Let's say they find skeletal remains at a, a crime scene. So they got a skeleton, uh, and that's it. Uh, and they dig it up, and they're like, how are we going to tell who this is? And, and that web e-learning thing kind of showed that a little bit, all the stuff they can do. And from that video, you probably noticed that uh, the male skeleton is a little bit larger and heavier, uh, but that's not really the telltale sign because that can vary a lot from person to person. The biggest thing is the pelvis. And when you look at the pelvis, uh, the male pelvis is deep and funnel shaped, less than 90 degrees. The female is shallow, broad, and flaring, wider than 90 degrees. Um, and obviously, that's for the, it's the birth canal so the baby can fit through there. Let me grab something real quick. Um, so this is what we're talking about. Uh, you can see this is a female and how wide it is across from one hip bone to the other hip bone. And obviously that's so a baby can fit through the birth canal. That's the biggest difference um, is, is that um, uh, pelvis and how wide it is. Um, so that's, that's the biggest telltale difference between a male skeleton and a female. Uh, kind of a funny link down here. You're welcome to, to look at that sometime. Uh, I will post notes coming up here, but uh, that's uh, kind of a funny one. Uh, the reason I put it on here is because this guy says he's pregnant and he's of course, he's been pregnant for about 10 years, so it's a pretty long pregnancy. But the biggest thing is a male could not deliver a baby. They'd have to do a C-section, plus they don't have a uterus. That's a big thing, too. But uh, that's something to kind of keep in mind. The skeletal system is a lot different between a male and a female for that reason. All right. So the other big thing, I kind of just want to go over the differences in skeletons. As you, as you grow and you go from infancy to adult, and that unfortunately later on when we go to the end of our lifespan, um, what happens to that skeleton? There's a lot of physical changes that occur. Uh, the biggest thing is head size. When you, when you see a newborn baby, it looks like they're all head in this tiny little body. There's a lot of truth to that. Your head actually decreases from one fourth of your total body height to one eighth. So a pretty, a little bit of a difference there. So if you guys remember from the first part of notes, those plates, the parietal, the occipital, the frontal, they're going to come together and they're going to fuse. And when they do that, that makes your skull smaller. So when a baby is born, they're all separated because it has to squeeze through the birth canal. So you got to have some give to it. But eventually we fuse, fibrous tissue grows between the plates. And uh, then we have the size of our skull the rest of our life. So uh, that's a big dramatic uh, difference. Um, the face goes the other way. It actually flattens out. So your facial bones are going to flatten as you get uh, older from one eighth to one half of the head size, which is even more dramatic. Your trunk shortens and the legs lengthen. And uh, that's a big thing. So let me show you a picture of what I'm talking about. And this is pretty dramatic, but you can see how big this baby's head is. And then they got this tiny little face kind of plastered on this big head. So, you know, I, I think sometimes first time parents, they get all concerned when their baby's born. They're like, oh my gosh, their head is so huge. It doesn't stay that way. It does get in more proportion. You got this little body, big head, but eventually everything balances out, okay? Now, when we go the other end of the lifespan, when we get into our 70s, 80s, 90s, then we got these other issues. So uh, loss of calcium, remember we talked about 97% of your calcium is stored in your bones. Um, we're going to lose that as we get older, especially women. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and what that causes is jagged bones. They get spurs, little outcroppings that rub against tendons and ligaments and cause a lot of pain, a lot of arthritis. We'll talk about that uh, next chapter. Um, and the biggest thing in women is osteoporosis, which is brittle bones. Uh, and it causes hollow bones. And, and you hear of older people shattering hips, shattering femurs. That's why they say that is because that's what happens when you get brittle bones. And the reason women get it more is because uh, of estrogen and hormones. Uh, it's, you're just more susceptible. So you have to pay attention to that, especially if you're a woman. 
if you have uh, a history of, of osteoporosis in the family, uh, when you get to a certain age in your 50s in that area, 40s, not bad to check with your doctor. Sometimes they'll put you on calcium supplements and, and things like that that kind of slow that down. So uh, you want to be careful with that. Increase in fracture danger, obviously, since those bones uh, lose their density, that's going to be a problem too. Uh, you really can't tell, um, you know, that someone has osteoporosis from the outside. Let me show you a picture here. But you really can tell from the inside. Um, let's see if I can get find that slide real quick. Probably oh, we went right, flying right by it. Not those. We'll get to that eventually. Um, there you go. So you really can't tell from the outside a person has osteoporosis, but look at the inside. This is what your bone should look like. This is what osteoporosis looks like. You just lose that, that density in the middle, and you can see why that bone would be a hollow type of bone uh, issue. Uh, that's, that's a big problem, especially in women. All right. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, kind of an introduction. So your skeleton does go through a huge change as, as you grow and you get older and that type of thing. All right. Uh, one last thing we'll talk about today, and, and then uh, we'll pick up here tomorrow, is bone formation. Uh, how does your skeleton uh, form bone? Uh, skeleton takes about three months to um, develop in, a, in an embryo. That's pretty quick. So about three months, you got your entire skeleton in place. Now, obviously, it is... Is cartilage not solid bone when you're a baby? I'll show you a crazy picture of that in a minute. So eventually what we will do is we will convert that bone from a cartilage type of flexible skeleton to a more solid, denser skeleton. That's called ossification. You can see that on the screen here. Um, and ossification begins when bone-forming cells, we call those osteoblasts with a B, they're going to... Uh, whoops. One too many uh, clicks here. They're going to uh, lay down bone, okay? Now, going back to bio one days, I know we're going back a couple years or three years for some of you. Uh, if you remember, we have those uh, cell organelles. The Golgi body in a bone cell is specialized to secrete this carbohydrate. It's got this huge long name. I apologize for this. It's called mucopolysaccharides, or MPS for short. Uh, it's just a, a sugar and muco means it's got a little mucus mixed in, so it's sticky, okay? It's going to lay this, this secretion down, and then we're going to throw some uh, collagen in there to give it more uh, strength, and that's the endoplasmic reticulum. So the Golgi body lays down this, this sticky substance. The endoplasmic reticulum lays down collagen, and that's going to accumulate around the bone that we're trying to solidify. Um, Think about this. I don't know if any of you ever worked with concrete, but when we pour concrete, it's liquid when it comes out. And then a lot of times uh, workers will put re-rod steel bars in there, and that gives it more, more um, uh, strength. And then eventually that turns solid, and that rebar is in the middle of it. That's what we're doing here. We're laying down the, the liquid cement. We're throwing in the rebar, the collagen, and then eventually it hardens and becomes a solid bone. That is ossification, okay? Um, there's a great video with that, uh, that that explains that a little bit. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then uh, uh, that's only part of the process, okay? What happens from that point is, um, there you go, bundles of reinforcement rods. So fibers plus this MPS. If you put the two of those together, we call that the bone matrix, okay? Now, that's still liquid, still kind of flexible. So what we do is we throw something called calcium salt. That's why they always say calcium is so important for bones because it helps for density. You hear the commercial drink milk. It's, it's good for your bones, right? Does your bones good? There you go. So we throw a little calcium salt in there, and then that makes this mixture harden, and that's called calcification. So ossification occurs first, then calcification follows right behind, and that's what makes the bone solid, all right? Now, here's the deal, okay? This happens at different rates and different bones, and, and your whole skeleton doesn't do this at once. It's kind of a process, okay? Uh, so what happens is, this is kind of interesting. Sorry, my, my clicker is a little bit crazy today. The bone grows two different directions, and there's a reason for that, okay? So let me show you a diagram. So I've got to get you some. This is from your collar sheet, so 
if you've been working on those, which I hope you have been. There's only three of them this time. Um, I got you got to get some directions here. Okay, so let me give you a little background, and then and then we'll uh, uh, I'll explain a little bit more in a second. The tops of your bones. This is from your color sheet. This is called the epiphysis. There's one here, and there's one down here. That's the ends of your bone. The middle is called the diaphysis. Okay. So bone growth curves two directions, from the top to the middle and from the middle out. You can see my arrows here, okay? And that's what this shows on this little bar thing over here too, okay? This makes sense if you think about it because if my bones got solid on the ends and they weren't solid in the middle, the bone would bend in the middle and eventually could break, right? If it got solid in the middle and not on the ends, then it's going to snap off on the ends, right? So if we... If we do it both directions, that keeps the bone solid throughout this process. And the last place it's going to come together is about a fourth of the way down here and a fourth of the way down here. That's called a growth plate. You've probably heard of that before. All right. Now, what's interesting, this is kind of an interesting picture. I couldn't find a human, but I found a, a chick. And you can see where the beak is, it, it, what's red is, is hardened bone, the arms, the legs. And look how strategic this is. We do the same thing. We strategically harden some bones faster than others, okay? Um, and this makes sense. This chick's got to peck through the eggs. We want the beak um, solid. We want the leg solid and the arm solid. So when they hatch out, they can walk. Eventually, the vertebrae is going to get solid, and the rest of it will catch up. So that's pretty much... Okay, sorry. Had to, had to pause it there. Mr. Wilson was yapping on the PA. But uh, so that's how it works. So... Diaphysis, that's what this diagram means. It'll make more sense if you look at your diagram, right? So this is keeps the bone, the skeleton from hardening uh, too fast. We do this slowly. It takes us, you know, till we're about 18 uh, or thereabouts before our skeleton's totally formed and we're done growing, sometimes quicker for some people than others. And, and that's the process. So two parts to it. So ossification is the big part of my test coming up. Um, it's actually going to be the end of this week. So here we go. So ossification curves. First, we lay down the mucopolysaccharides with the reinforcement, and then calcification. We harden it with calcium salts, and that's the direction it grows. Hope that makes sense. If you got any questions, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, I think that, that makes sense. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of review this a little bit more some, uh, coming up here. Uh, so we don't have a lot of notes this time, so we'll try to finish up notes by Wednesday, uh, and, and then uh, uh, we'll pick up there, um, hopefully. Uh, as we go. So let me just kind of show you this little quick video it goes over the osteoblast, osteoclast. We'll talk more about those um, uh, later. Uh, well, I'll save the video because I actually didn't get that far. So we'll talk about the rest of that uh, tomorrow. So hey, have a good day. We'll talk to you later. See ya. Bye.